Hello friends, how are you all? My name is Harshid Devedi friends and I welcome you back to my video. So in this video friends, I will be talking to you regarding this rock cycle friends. Okay, now most of the things of right cycle, the very basis of it, I have already told you in the video on interconversion of sedimentary igneous and metamorphic rock. The link of that video I will give in the description box below. Also in addition to this video, watch the video on the classification of rocks friends and in order to understand how the concept of rock cycle originated what actually happened that people started thinking about rock cycle so for that i have made a video on the principle of uniformitarianism in that i have also discussed the catastrophism versus uniformitarianism debate so all of these things have been you know uh, covered by me friends so watch this video and in addition to this watch this video on rock cycle so my name is Harshi Devdi friends if you want to follow me the link on my instagram profile is given in the description box below this video is in english hindi version link is also given in the description box below now just rock cycle is the conversion between igneous sedimentary metamorphic now how igneous is becoming sedimentary how sedimentary is becoming metamorphic so how is this interconversion going on this is all that is important which is covered in this video here you can see igneous sedimentary metamorphic okay here igneous sedimentary metamorphic all the figures are showing the same things just the way of showing is it different so please watch the uniformitarianism video so now when hutton gave his theory on uniformitarianism friends after that he prepared his own rock cycle and this was the rock cycle obviously mr hutton said Hutton, I have already told you in the previous video that he started analyzing the natural phenomenon against him. You know, surrounding him, for example, he started studying the phenomenon of rivers depositing silt in its floodplain. Then, obviously, the erosion of mountains. So, all of these things Hutton was studying. So, Hutton said that if earth is not changing and if all the sediments are going away, then after some time the earth will become flat, but it is not becoming flat, it is maintaining its current landscape. So, if the earth is maintaining its current landscape, then whatever sediments are going inside the water, there would be some methodology of bringing that back to the land. So, for this, Hutton gave his own rock cycle. And the basis of this rock cycle was actually very vague. Okay. Because at that point of time, you know, in the initial part of 19th century and the end of 18th century, science was not developed, friends. Okay. Things which we know today at that point of time seemed impossible because people, the technology was not at all developed. It was very old times we are talking about. So Hutton predicts that recycling of sediments is happening due to Earth's internal heat energy, Earth's internal heat engine. And that heat is causing everything. That heat is causing sediments deposited in the basins to be converted to rocks. Heat caused the upliftment of mountain ranges. Heat contributed in part to the weathering of rocks. So Mr. Hutton said, that heat in the interior of the earth is responsible for all the processes and obviously if weathering is and erosion is going on that is because of agents of denudation then obviously that sediment is going to see now inside see the heat of the earth is changing that sediment into rock now this was a very vague concept but you know actually mr hutton made a start but this was wrong okay then this uh, converted rock was uplifted so the continents were uplifting the mountains were uplifting because of earth's internal heat so this was also wrong okay so many wrong things mr hutton said okay so despite the fact that hutton's thought process and the reasons he provided for all the phenomenon on earth was wrong despite that he is credited of putting a simple coherent theory in front of us and the principle of uniformitarianism which was actually very much emphasized by him was the most important was his most important contribution friends now hutton was not very good at writing he was good at logical thinking he was good at implementing things but he was not good at writing okay so whatever he wrote that was very technical highly scientific and very few people were able to understand it but his theories and his thought processes were published in <clears throat> john playfair's illustration of the hattonian theory of the earth which was published in 1802 and the next is principles of geology 1830 okay and at this point of time friends when this 19th century started the debate of catastrophism versus uniformitarianism was ended because now people started to believe that yes earth is changing continuously and what was happening years back is happening today also previously this was not accepted now this became an accepted fact 
now coming to the most important thing rock cycle friends okay now first of all whatever is happening in this rock cycle it is because of two in, uh, energies first one is the internal energy of the earth okay you know that inside the earth there is a lot of heat energy which is ro originating due to radioactive decay of you know uh, the radio to decay of active elements then obviously the energy the heat energy that is coming from the core and you know as soon as deeper you are going to go inside earth the energy levels are going to increase so that is one energy which is affecting this rock cycle and the second and the most important energy that is affecting this rock cycle and every other thing on this planet is solar energy solar energy something is the source of all the things that is happening on this planet we all know that but we will talk about the solar energy with respect to this rock cycle only only you know see friends what is happening in this rock cycle i have already told you about igneous rocks when the igneous rocks you know remain inside the earth they they become intrusive igneous rocks and when they come out on the surface they become extrusive igneous rocks okay when these rocks come to the surface then agents of denudation are acting upon them they are being exposed exposed to the phenomena the atmospheric phenomena which is happening in the atmosphere and obviously those rocks the intrusive igneous rocks which are beneath the crust they are actually not exposed to what is happening in the atmosphere so they are not affected so even if the weathering or erodation of the intrusive igneous rock has to happen it has to come to the surface of the earth and that sometimes happen because of different phenomena because of mass erosion mass movement so sometimes intrusive igneous rocks also comes out so as soon as the igneous rocks forms on the surface its weathering and erosion starts okay its weathering and erosion starts and when it is weathered and erosion starts you know sediments are removed from these rocks and then these sediments are transported to some other location and this is being done by agents of denudation like wind water glaciers you know uh, mass movement now what is the source of this wind water glaciers mass movement why all these agents are at play who is providing energy to all of these agents sun is providing energy to all of these agents friends okay so what is happening outside most of the things is because of sun and there is some role of the internal heat of the earth also so two types of energy here here are at play so as soon as these igneous rocks are eroded they will form sediments now these sediments can go into the ocean also through rivers okay and they can also deposit on the land okay not despite of the fact see suppose they are depositing on the land so obviously a lot of sediments from different places will come to a place they will solidify there then obviously compaction will happen finally cementation will happen and they will become sedimentary rocks the same sediment when it will go to the ocean okay now in the ocean this sediment will be deposited there will be many other sediments for example ocean water is salty there are a lot of ions minerals you know uh, dissolved in this uh, water of the ocean so they sometimes precipitate and join these sediments and then the same process of compaction and cementation also occurs here and sedimentary rocks are formed so sedimentary rocks on the land and in the ocean are formed by the same process friends okay and when the sedimentary rocks are buried beneath the earth crust when a layer comes above them of the earth then they are subjected to severe heat and pressure and when they are subjected to severe heat and pressure friends after some time after some time this some time here is thousands of years the process of metamorphism is occurring during this time and finally they come out in the form of metamorphic rocks okay so when sedimentary rocks are being subjected to high heat and pressure they transform themselves into metamorphic rocks now if this metamorphic rock has to be converted to say igneous rock so what will happen friends obviously this metamorphic rocks has to be melted and how it will be melted it will be melted because of the internal energy of the earth because this much amount of heat is present only in the interior of the earth okay friends so there when they go into the mantle the heat is so high that they become you know they melt and this is because when they melt that magma magma or lava again moves upwards again it solidifies and when this magma lava will solidify it will become an igneous rock because when solidification of magma and lava is going on igneous rocks are forming this are covered in the classification of rocks video so please watch that also now how we are going to form sedimentary rocks through this metamorphic rocks so many times this happens that these metamorphic rocks are also exposed to the surface of the earth 
despite of the fact that mostly they form beneath the surface of the earth but because of erosion they get exposed to the surface of the earth so when metamorphic rocks are getting exposed to the surface of the earth the same agents of denudation will act on them weathering and erosion of these rocks will happening and then sediments will come apart then sediments will deposit compactions will happen cementation will happen and again sedimentary rocks are formed so you can see that this whole process is going on which is leading to the conversion of one element in one form to another form and this whole combined process is termed as rock cycle trends it is derived because of external solar energy and the internal energy of the earth friends so this is the complete rock cycle explained to you friends i hope this video was clear for you all the other videos whose link i am giving in the description box below i would request you to watch all those videos friends because when you are going to watch all of these videos together the complete topic will be steadfast in your mind you will never be able to forget it and you can also explain it to your other friends who are looking for similar content so i am thank you full for you giving me time friends if this video was liked by you kindly comment and tell me how you liked it subscribe to my channel like this video and share this video more and more with your friends